Good evening, everyone. The Durham District School Board of Trustees welcomes you to the Standing Committee meeting of Monday, June the 6th. I'd like to call this meeting to order and begin with the land acknowledgement. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school board and schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island, First Nation, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory which our of the Chippewas of Georgina are... Island, First Nation. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, learn, and live. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing and hearing none. Are there any changes to the agenda tonight? Seeing none. The agenda is approved as distributed. I don't believe we have any community presentations this evening. Thank you, Director Marsh. So we'll move on to item six on the agenda. 6A, I'll call on Superintendent Davis for the Student Voice Initiative. Georgette. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I do have two guests with me um, online, Chris Conley and Lauren Bliss, and Lauren will be presenting the screen for us this evening. Through you, Chair. It's a pleasure to um, be here to share an update on the Student Voice Initiative this evening. In the fall, we started to think about, um, in response to our operational goals, how we can get student voice to understand if we are making an impact in those goals. We wanted to go into the schools and ask students about their experiences and to talk to the students about what that looks and sounds like for them. And we wanted to see how the indigenous rights, human rights, and equity were translates into student rights and how our students are responding, responding to them. So we found some trusting adults, teachers, facilitators, vice principals and principals, and we asked them to ask questions of our students around how we're doing. I'm just waiting one moment for a slide that will come up. Okay, and we can continue on while we wait. So when we asked the trusting adults, one of the things that we shared and we thought about and we looked at were student rights and our duty bearers as student rights for students. Every student has the right to an education and has the right to an education without discrimination and without hate. So we looked at those pieces. So in our process and this evening to share a process we have demario who's our student trustee who's going to talk to us about the why behind why we're doing this we have lauren our principal lead who's going to talk to us about the process we have chris conley with us who will share with us the analysis and then i will conclude with our next steps so uh, demario are you ready Uh, thank you, Superintendent Davis, and uh, through you, Chair. Um, recognizing our why for anything that we do in life is very important because recognizing our why helps us to identify the reason why we pursue something. And uh, the reason why we need to you know, promote uh, the student voice is because every student has their own different set of, like, um, every student has their own set of needs and um, their own set of different 
uh, circumstances that need to be dealt with. You know, uh, our school board is a very diverse school board. We have the privilege of having a whole um, community of students with all different backgrounds and skill sets. And you can't just have one plan that is set for like one type of student because we have so many different types of students. Like for me, I am a, cis, I am a cisgender black indigenous male, but uh, there are some types of uh, strategies that can accommodate myself that won't accommodate someone else. And you know, uh, I think that every, every person in this world, including our students, with a good heart is equal to each other. Like I feel like everyone is equal. Like I view myself equal to everyone in this room. I, view my, I don't view myself higher than anyone else. And we can say the same for our students as well. You know, our students are all amazing people, regardless of if one student is a student prime minister and the other one is just your friendly student down the hall. Uh, everyone has their own set of needs. And uh, I feel like it's really important that we genuinely uh, show the students that we care about them. You know what I mean? Like, uh, for example, uh, I, I said this in my OPSOA speech back in the panel that I spoke at, but you know, we really need to take the time to know the students as a, as a person. Like, who knows the students better than themselves? You know what I mean? And I feel like it's like we need to know why we help the students because, you know, we need to show them that we care. Like, you know, uh, everyone has their own different sets of things that need to be accommodated. And if we remember that, you know, each student is different and it's not just one size fits all, then we can really make things more equitable for our students and our education system. Uh, that's what I had to say. Uh, it's not the most well structured, but I feel like it's definitely important that we recognize that, you know, uh, our students are, are their own sets of people regardless of their age. Like they have their own different types of, you know, stressors and stuff like that. And it's really important that we recognize why we help the students because we need to show them that we care as, you know, the higher ups in the school board. We see that they're in need and we see that we're not just, you know, uh, doing some type of shallow effort to accommodate their needs. We need to show them that we actually care about them. Everyone is unique, everyone belongs, everyone has human rights. Uh, these are things that I tell myself all the time because everyone is equal to each other. Like it doesn't matter if, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're more financially unstable. It doesn't matter if you're a student prime minister, you're all equal to each other. And you know, we need to show that just because one person may not have as much notoriety as their peers, doesn't mean that they're not less important. You know what I mean? And we have to show the students that we care about them. But uh, yeah, that's all on my part. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Demario. Thanks so much, Demario. <clears throat> we wanted the opportunity tonight to tell you a little bit about the background of our Student Voice Initiative. So as a system, we wanted to better understand student experience and gather student voice data to help our schools and our school board to identify some of the issues and obstacles that our students were facing we wanted a chance to promote a sense of belonging and increase equitable outcomes for all of our students and to improve student achievement and well being. So, our process, um, our student uh, voice initiative began with the formation of our committee, and that committee identified student groups who needed the opportunity to share their DDSB experiences. So, students who participated in our initiative. Um, they shared their lived experiences, their reflections across a variety of Ontario human rights grounds, which included race, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and creed. So once we had those students groups identified, we reached out to our potential facilitators, and those were individuals who we believed had a connection and a trusted relationship with our students and would be able to create a safe space where our students felt really comfortable uh, providing us with their feedback. So our facilitators were invited to participate in an orientation session and that that process highlighted effective practices for creating that safe space for our students. It encouraged uh, engagement and consistency across the process. So we collected data through a variety of different means, focus groups, one on one interventions, interview or sorry, one on one interviews, formal discussions and a variety of written feedback forms and that provided us um, to learn the opportunity to learn about experiences across identity and identity intersections, which may not have been visible in some of our previous, more traditional data collection processes. So our facilities were really able, the nice part is they were able to accommodate the needs of our students as they gathered the data. And that allowed students to participate in the process in whatever form they were most comfortable with. So our guiding questions are really what drove our interview process and our interview structure. And they were developed to really determine whether the work that we're doing is landing with our students in the DDSB. 
So our key questions for our interviews were, what can we do to make your daily student experience better? Your right as a student is to be treated with dignity and respect and to be free from discrimination, racism and harassment in your school. What has been your experience tied to your rights and responsibilities? What are the things your school, your teacher does to make you feel recognized and that they understand you? And finally, what do you need to be a successful learner? Approaches we've been using in this initiative have really focused on removing obstacles to student participation that may exist in our traditional data collection approaches. So these considerations relate to the areas of trust, methods, analysis, and timing. With respect to trust, we're engaging staff who have relationships with students and we're asking them to join us to create safe spaces where students feel comfortable discussing their experiences and reflections with a trusted staff member. With respect to methods, we recognize that traditional surveys filled with multiple choice and open-ended questions can be an obstacle to student participation. To address this, we're using an open methodology that includes, as being mentioned, focus groups, interviews, informal conversations, as well as other forms of feedback that students feel most comfortable using to express themselves across our key questions. With respect to analysis, we recognize that some voices are hidden by the volume of, the, of other responses. And the Student Voice Initiative is designed to make participating students' uh, student experience and reflections more visible. Uh, students will not only be engaged in feedback, but also in analysis. As we compile themes from the shared notes, we'll be sharing these with students and staff who are participating to seek their feedback on whether their experiences and reflections have been faithfully represented. And we'll be using the resulting feedback on what has been missed or needs greater emphasis in uh, the draft for the final report. Although many focus groups, interviews and discussions are still in progress, we're currently working on the analysis of notes we've received and we'll iteratively incorporate additional notes into the analysis as we receive them. With respect to time, we understand that our data collection deadlines dictate engagement and the quick turnaround we often require is not often another obstacle that needs to be addressed. In this student voice initiative, we're moving at the speed of relationships, both relationships that exist and relationships that are being built. So as a result, it doesn't fit easily within our traditional timelines. Another way we're addressing the time as a barrier is by incorporating feedback students have already provided us through other data collections, where student voice may have been shared, but perhaps not heard. As we continue this work that is in progress, we look forward to joining you again to share the student voices and the themes that emerge. So as Chris mentioned, we say in our team that we're moving at the speed of relationships. That means that we're taking the time to listen. We're taking the time to make sure that the student voices have been heard. We have been listening to students whose sometimes their voices aren't heard from different SES um, locations, from students who have different uh, needs and learn differently and with different gifts that they share. So we have been taking the time to hear those voices that we don't um, often um, hear or we need to listen again. So our next steps is that we're going to go back to the focus groups and we're going to ask, is this what you said? This is what we heard. We're also going to listen and be responsive in terms of actions in terms of our next steps and we're going to promise we're going to pr make promises and we're going to do what we say that we we promised in terms of what we've heard so we would like to thank the students because the students trust us with their voices and their experiences the facilitators who took the time to listen and the committee who's taking the time to look at the data and this is not an event it's a process, a process of engagement. And the beauty of this process is that we can take the information that we've heard from small groups of focus groups of students and we can use that information to support students in the whole of DDSB community. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Superintendent Davis. Wondering if there are any questions or comments. Go ahead, Trustee Edwards. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I've got a couple of questions. I'm just so excited about the student voice. 
I'm looking so forward to seeing the results uh, and the, of the analysis um, and just some of the comments that have been provided through this uh, process. Um, and uh, just a, a comment, uh, two questions. One is around uh, we're going to be sharing the analysis in, in September back to, to the schools and, and the groups uh, for their feedback. And I'm just wondering around um, are we concerned at all around uh, the number of students that might have graduated that would not be able to be available to provide their feedback on the, the information that has been gathered? Thank you for your question and through you, Chair. We are going back in September to most groups, but we are also working with alternative um, learning centers and graduates. So we do have a process through our facilitated principals and vice principals to all of our, we're hoping to get to go back to everyone by September, but we're still working through the process in June to get back to the specific focus groups that we heard from before um, they transition. So that is a part of our process. Thank you. And, and my, my, my supplemental question is really for the uh, student trustees and, and that uh, you've been involved um, in this process and, and uh, could you maybe comment on a highlight of what you think that, uh, that you've thought there's a benefit of going through this process and, and uh, what maybe you're looking forward to seeing out of, uh, out of the analysis so far, just that since you've been involved with it. Um, thank you for the lovely question, Trustee Edwards. Um, as a student, I feel, I feel very um, validated and special that there's this whole meticulous process that revolves around accommodating the needs of the students. You know, as a student, uh, I'm just like one single individual within a very large school board that covers multiple townships and uh, towns. And uh, that, that can kind of make you feel very small, if you understand what I mean, kind of like, like a little fish in a big sea. So to have a very big and like meticulously crafted uh, initiative that revolves around accommodating the needs of not just me, but my fellow students as well. It makes me feel like, you know, it makes me feel like I'm recognized that I have my own set of needs that differ from the adults. And it makes me happy to see that there's definitely like work and there's change that's being planned to, you know, make positive impacts, you know what I mean? And uh, one thing that I'm looking forward to is I'm, I'm looking forward to see positive things happen for our students. You know, I'm gonna be graduating, so I will no longer be a part of the Durham District School Board as a student, but it's nice to see that, you know, younger students will have their needs accommodated. Like, as a student trustee, I've had many opportunities where students have reached out to me saying that they want to see some improvements in this field, or maybe they feel like this other field could use some work. So to know that there's gonna be an initiative that's gonna revolve around, you know, listening to the students and figuring out how the adults in the school board can help the students. It's amazing to see. It's going to make it's going to help a lot of people and it's going to change a lot of lives for the better. And who knows, maybe maybe this initiative that we have can unlock the potential of some of our students in our school board. And then who knows? There we have some amazing students in our school board. And if we can just do this initiative to help them achieve their true potential, then honestly the sky's the limit. Like who knows who knows what they'll do. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all for me. I'm just really looking forward to see how many students can be helped by this initiative that we have here. Thank you, Demario. James, would you like to add to that? Yes, if I can. And thank you, and through you, Chair, and thank you for the question. Something that is great about this particular thing that we're doing with Student Senate and with Superintendent Davis is that it's different than things such as the student census, where that's purely collecting data based on demographics. And as we know, the North is very different from East Durham or West Durham. And with this, we're actually collecting student experiences. We're not just looking at numbers and analyzing those numbers. We're basing it upon students' experiences 
and also looking at the numbers, say I have different grades or the different representation within our area. So that is one thing that I love about this. The second part is that it's directly affiliated and associated with Student Senate. It's not just sort of a board initiative that we're actually involving student trustees and the students in which we represent so that we're instilling real and positive change within our schools. And because we are being directly consulted with this project, we're able to relay that information back to our schools and the students that encompass those schools. So that is something that I love about this and especially because it's on such a pressing timeline too that it's not something that's going to get forgotten over the time frame that this project is projected to kind of continue over. So that is, those are kind of my thoughts and I'm also excited to see the changes that will be made and implemented as a result of this focus group. So thank you. Thank you, James. Um, I'm going to go to Trustee Barnes and then to Trustee Lundquist. Go ahead, Trustee Barnes. We have, we have done so many changes within our boards. We have implemented so many initiatives and we have a vision that we have worked towards for so long. And so I'm glad that we are now looking, going to the desk of the students to see how those things have impacted our, our DDSB community, our students. I love the, the, the speech around potential and unlocking that potential and what that can be done. So excited about this project. I am, I'm looking forward to the, well, I'm looking forward to the outcome. I know it will definitely define our board. Thank you, Trustee Barnes. Uh, Trustee Lundquist. Thank you, Chair Thatcher. Um, I, I share the sentiments of both Trustees Barnes and Edwards, and I suppose uh, Trustee Knowles as well. Um, and I am excited by this. I'm excited by the outreach, and I'm really looking forward to actually hearing some of the deeper feedback and whatnot in the fall. One of the worries that I have, that I've, I've pretty persistently had actually, is that um, even even when we, see, you know, when we go beyond what we've nor normally or usually done in terms of reaching equity-deserving groups, um, I, I still worry that we lose potentially a swath of students. And these are the the students that fly under the radar, the quiet students, the ones who aren't necessarily involved or engage or identify, um, you know, on the basis of an intersectional, you know, we all have intersections, but not everybody identifies in any particular way. And so I'm wondering if we have given thought to how do we reach that subset of students, the students who fly quietly under the radar, who aren't necessarily um, soaring in terms of academic achievement or involvement in school activities, but are still very much a part of the school community and feeling disenfranchised and a little bit um, disjointed from it. Because I know that that's not a small subset of, of the student population. So I'm wondering if that has been taken into consideration in terms of the students that we're talking to as well. Go ahead, just, uh, Superintendent Davis. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for your question, Trustee Lundquist. We actually had um, some conversations with our committee at the very beginning of this project, and one of the things that we talked about was how can we speak with students who won't necessarily want to speak with us, but whose voices we really need to hear. That was actually a category that we thought we really need to focus on. So we have done some some things there, and we when we talk about the trusted adults, we have sought out um, teachers and support and facilitators, and we also are making it, um, the reason why we say it's at the speed of relationships is because we continually go back and we continually ask the question, whose voice is missing to get those voices? But we actually had um, one committee meeting just about that, just awesome. about the voices that we need to hear that may not want to speak with us or may not feel the trust. So that is why this project is taking um, that time because we will be going back and back and back. That's worth the time, I think. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you, Chair Thatcher. All right, uh, go ahead, Chair Morton. Thank you, and through you, Chair Thatcher. I just want to say that this student voice initiative is so amazing, but I also want to commend our stu two student trustees 
for speaking so well about the project. I love to see that level of engagement, that level of involvement, and I am so thrilled that you are identifying the eastern part of Durham, the western part of Durham, the northern part of Durham, and everybody has a voice. Thank you, student trustees. And thank you, superintendent, for arranging this, for making sure that it's moving forward. Thank you, Superintendent Davis. Thank you, Superintendent Davis and your crew, uh, your, your team. Uh, it seems to have certainly incited a whole lot of interest with trustees. And we know for sure that we're a board who values the tr uh, student voice. So moving on in our agenda then to item 6B, and I'd like to call on Superintendents Elmhurst and Nevels for the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit Contemporary Voices. There we go. Good evening. Through you, Chair Thatcher. Uh, the report this evening can be found on pages 5 through 8 of your package. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that learning about Indigenous knowledge systems, worldviews, truths, histories, and contributions benefits all students in all schools and must be present in all curriculum areas. We advocate for all students to have access to Indigenous authorship and to prioritize Indigenous materials and resources. As a part of the Truth and Re Reconciliation Commission consultation process and reports, residential school survivors asked for one thing. They asked for one mandatory course whereby students would learn about true histories and contemporary issues regarding Indigenous peoples in Canada. To be responsive to this request and ensure that all DDSB students graduate having experienced Indigenous authorship and anti-colonial learning opportunities, the DDSB began a two-year implementation plan for the mandatory First Nation Métis and Inuit Contemporary Voices Grade 11 English course. In September 2021, nine secondary schools participated in phase one of implementation, and all secondary schools will be offering this course starting in September 2022. At this time, we are so grateful to have two students with us this evening who will share their experiences within this course at Ajax High School alongside their teacher, Zabal Ashukian. Um, and at I will at this point pass it over to Denise Nickerson, um, system lead within Indigenous education, who will introduce the team that she has with her this evening and lead us through our presentation. Chimigwech. Thank you, Superintendent Elmhurst. As the Indigenous Education Department has been working with phase one schools, staff and students, we have focused on the key classroom teaching and learning practices as shown in this slide. The presentation today will be highlighting student voice and choice and providing authentic examples of how these key pieces are embedded in MBE. As Superintendent Elmhurst indicated, we will be hearing from two student presenters who have chosen to introduce themselves when their time comes, as well as hearing from Christine Upton and Cheryl Thompson our two MBE coaches. Thanks, Denise Nickerson. Sorry Ms. to Here. interrupt. Sorry to interrupt, team. I don't see the slides. Are you able to present the slides? Sorry about that. There we go. This year, phase one schools have incorporated self selected reading libraries, literature circles, and book clubs and MBE classes. These provide opportunities for students to make deep connections to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada Calls to Action, TRC, and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, UNDRA. These include a diversity of text collections such as graphic texts, short works, poetry, plays, fiction, and nonfiction, etc., from a range of authors. Here is a small collection from an MBE class Casey Hackett teaches at G. L. Roberts Collegiate. These pedagogical shifts in teaching practices support student choice, voice, and have increased student engagement. 
These instructional practices are aligned with the DDSB Indigenous Education Policy and Procedure. This year, Phase 1 schools have taken part in two experiential learning opportunities. The first opportunity was a land-based learning activity. Twelve classes spent time at Noncon where they made connections to the text they've been reading in class. They engaged in a writing activity that asked them to think critically about the importance of land and the impact that they have in the environment. Other activities included a hike, fire building, and cookout. Concepts included being present in nature, leave no trace, and the interconnectedness of all things. While at Noncon, students deepened their understanding of the land acknowledgement, the TRC's calls to action, and UNDRIP. The second opportunity was an arts-based workshop. 22 classes spent two days thinking critically about art as a means of resistance. The workshop featured the artwork of Jay Soul, aka Triple War, from his Built on Genocide art exhibit. During the workshop, students examined paintings from the art, um, paintings from the art exhibit and made connections to true histories, the ongoing impacts of colonization, residential schools, and treaties and treaty relationships. The workshop concluded with a look at the Reclaim Indigenous Arts website, co-developed by Jay Soul, which speaks to the importance of supporting Indigenous artists and protecting Indigenous art. Please join me in welcoming Timo to Ajax High School students who are here to speak about their experiences in the MBE course. Hi, my name is Riley Quick. I am a grade 11 student at Ajax High and my pronouns are he, him. Experiencing this NBE course was honestly immaculate this year. I'm so glad I was able to experience this. It really opened up the floor for deeper conversations that are very, very uncomfortable to have, especially as a white person myself, but it, we, they need to be happen. They need to be said. Um, it made me self reflect on a lot of personal and just societal issues especially that Indigenous Canadians experience daily and historically. Hello, my name is Jonathan Wright. I am a grade 11 student at Ajax High School and my pronouns are he, him. Throughout my time in the NBE 3U1 course, I saw many changes happening with students in the classroom. Firstly, I saw many students engaging in active conversation in the classroom. The atmosphere of the course allowed students to feel comfortable sharing their opinions and contributed to critical thinking skills, which have overall led to positive changes within the students. Secondly, this course really made students feel empowered and encouraged them to become involved not only in Indigenous issues, but also other issues in human rights. NBE 3U1 helped students find topics that they were very passionate about, which helped them further their learning in and outside of the classroom. Thirdly, and I think most importantly, is that this course reminded us that First Nations, Métis, and Inuit Canadians are not a were and was, but that their issues are here and now, and that we need to confront them. Our history books often like to look at Indigenous Canadian culture as something that happened in the past. However, it is current and ongoing, and we are made to feel more compassionate towards the multitude of issues within the Indigenous community. Because of this, students have been given the, uh, the tools to correct misconceptions about Indigenous Canadians and help the people around them become more understanding. Overall, NBE 3 one was one of the best courses I have taken so far, and I would certainly do it again since it has only had positive effects on me and fellow classmates. Thank you so much, Riley and Jonathan. In addition, to these two Ajax high school students. We have had many other students share their thoughts and their experiences. And I would like to highlight a couple of quotes on the next two slides. I think the article discussions definitely taught me the most. It was a broad range of articles from multiple sources and brought the most relevant real life content into this course. One of the most interesting and relevant things I learned was the connection between various injustices against Indigenous peoples and how these injustices developed over time while still aligning with the overarching settler colonial interest of destroying Indigenous populations.
Thank you so much, everyone. We would like to thank you for your time this evening, and we are happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much for the presentation. Wondering if there's there are any questions uh, or comments. And I'll go to Trustee Lundquist. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will be very brief. I just wanted to say thank you for the presentation. Um, and the only question I have is I understand that this course is, um, is an elective in terms of grade 11 English. Is there any intention at any stage to make this a mandatory English course? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I'm happy to answer that question. Um, thank you for the question, Trustee Lindquist. This is actually a, a mandatory course as of September 2022. So I'm sorry, I misunderstood. That's okay. The, the nine schools that implemented uh, the course this year, it was also mandatory in those nine schools as first year of implementation. And as we move into full implementation next year, it will be mandatory in all schools, which is really exciting for us that all graduates will leave uh, the DDSB with at least one course that fully exposes them to Indigenous authorship. So thank you for your question. I appreciate that, and I'm sorry that I misunderstood. DeMario, did you want to add to that? Uh, I did have my own point that I wanted to mention. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, as an Indigenous student, I just wanted to say thank you for the lovely presentation and thank you to the speakers who presented that lovely presentation. Uh, throughout my 14 years in public education, unfortunately, I've had very little exposure to my Indigenous culture throughout, the school, throughout my 14 years in the school board. And the only representation that I did get to my Indigenous culture wasn't positive ones. And I'm not saying that it's not important to acknowledge the negative events that happen behind different communities, but you know, there's so much, there's so much lovely things about different cultures. Like as an indigenous person, there are so many things that I've learned about my culture, like the food or the traditions or the clothing that I've never seen in the education system. So knowing that we have this course that has been started to be implemented into our board, it's a very, it's a very nice thing to see. It's a sight for sore eyes, and I feel like as more Indigenous students come into our school board, when they see that we have this course that talks about their culture, I think that it will make them feel like they're seen, like they're heard, and they'll know that, you know, we see that uh, Indigenous people are amazing people, and we're here to implement that into our school board to make sure that they feel represented. So as an Indigenous student, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your hard work and for the lovely presentation. Thank you, DeMario. Um, it's uh, Trustee Barrett, is your hand up? I'm not seeing it on the screen here. No, it's not. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Um, are there any other comments or questions? And I'm seeing none. So we'll move on to item seven in the agenda, the re director's update, and I'll call on Director Nora Marsh. Thank you, good evening, trustees. As you may recall, the, um, once the writ was issued, the government went into caretaker mode, so I don't really have any update in terms of the Ministry of Education or uh, any new memorandums. I did want to let you know, however, that um, you may recall the government decided to go ahead with EQAO assessments and that they were compulsory for participation. We did, along with the rest of the province, encounter some technical difficulties in terms of the administration. EQAO then put a pause on those assessments for a few days while they um, remedied the issues. Uh, and so last week we did return to EQAO testing in grades three and six. Uh, several of our schools continue to encounter some technical difficulties. However, it did appear more localized. So just wanted to give you uh, that update. We were in communication throughout uh, in terms of with EQAO, in terms of assistance and with the deputy minister because understandably when things didn't go smoothly, uh, tensions and, and stress did rise within the schools. And so we did uh, advocate once again in terms of uh, trying to support that student well-being perhaps by pausing, but um, we did go ahead with it based on the direction from the Deputy Minister. So just wanted to update you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Director Marsh. 
Moving on in the agenda then to item eight, and there are no recommended actions this evening. So information items, item nine, A, um, I'll be uh, calling on our two trustees. Uh, Kayla Malcolm has sent regrets this evening. Uh, so I'll be calling on DeMario and James to uh, give us their student report. Uh, thank you and through you, Chair. As you just said, uh, unfortunately, Kayla was not able to be here with us today, so I just wanted to send uh, condolences on behalf of myself and James to her, and all of her parts will be covered by myself and James during our report, which we will give right now. Uh, we would like to present our monthly student trustee update. At our recent student senate meeting on May 16th, 2022, we provided senators with additional information regarding the student census and with the opportunity to participate in a student voice panel discussion led by the student senate administrative team. Furthermore, information regarding a research study project with the Higher Education Quality Council of Ontario was relayed to senators. Recently, we attended the Asta Eco AGM conference conference, which served as an opportunity for both the DDSB outgoing and incoming student trustees to make connections with student trustees from other school boards within the province, as well as discuss student advocacy projects within other school boards. The last student senate meeting for the 2021-2022 school year will be taking place on Monday, June 20th, 2022. This past year on Student Senate has been very productive and we are happy with the ongoing pro progress as well as the outcome of our advocacy work. The day-to-day -day operations would not have been possible without the dedication of DDSB student senators. Tentatively, the student success document, the ins and outs of finding help resource, will be completed prior to the end of this school year. The information included in the resource is currently being reviewed and vetted by the DDSB mental health leadership team and will be released upon design finalization. The student success working group is eager to advertise the resource. The equity working group is continuing to work on its resources that will promote equity throughout the school board. The goal is to complete the resources before the 2021-2022 school year is completed. As previously stated, the DDSB Student Senate is collaborating with DCDSB to host a Spirit Week from June 13th, 2022 to June 17th, 2022. The Spirit Days include Meme Monday, Trivia Tuesday, Spirit Wear Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, and Finale Friday. After great consideration, unfortunately, we, the student trustees, have decided to postpone the Student Senate Virtual Open House. Although our intentions for the event were in the right place, we do not believe we would be able to meet the standards we have set for the initiative given the little time left of the school year. However, we are very happy with the two main events we led this year, which took additional time and effort to execute and bring into fruition, I can't speak today, my apologies, uh, which include the Elementary Leadership Conference and the Mental Health Symposium. As this is our last official report at a standing committee meeting, we would like to collectively give our thanks to everyone at the board who has made this experience one to remember. And we want to thank you all for your endless support and encouragement throughout this past year. This concludes our final standing committee meeting report. We would be happy to take any questions. Thank you, James and DeMario, for your final uh, student trustee report. It's been a pleasure to work with you this year and we, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, wish you um, all of the success in the future. Um, I'd like to ask if there are any questions or any comments for DeMario and James. And I'm seeing none. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead, Trustee <laughs> Barnes. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to thank um, thank you both, and of course, uh, uh, student trustee Kayla as well, for for all of your work and your initiatives and, and uh, tireless efforts for reaching out to the student body and and making sure that uh, everyone's voices are heard. So I, I just want to wish you all the best of luck, and um, I will uh, see you at our, our next meeting. Though, right? We have we have one more meeting with you, so that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trustee Forbes. Go ahead, uh, Trustee Barnes. Congratulate you, um, all our student trustees. You've been amazing trustees in a difficult time. 
you were the first set of trustees through, through COVID, um, did COVID for your entire terms. And so it, it was a pleasure to watch you pivot and to engage students and to bring your voice to the table. So congratulations and thank you for an amazing year. I'm seeing no further comments or questions. So I'll, I'll move on to item uh, 9C on the agenda and call on uh, Associate Director Wright and Executive Lead uh, Robert Serjanik. Uh, I'm sorry, I have missed one in between because you weren't ready. I think that's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Uh, 9B, then let's uh, take a step backward and uh, call on Superintendent McCauley, um, who will be presenting the Special Education Plan and Programs virtually this evening. Go ahead, Andrea. Thank you and good evening through you, Chair. The purpose of this report, which begins on page nine of tonight's agenda, is to provide trustees with the DDSB Special Education Plan for the 22-23 school year and related special education program updates. Our commitment as a district is to center Indigenous rights and human rights. The district recognizes that protecting and upholding Indigenous rights and human rights are necessary to support student sense of safety, inclusion, well-being, engagement, and belonging, and also to developing a culture of care where students are respected, valued, and are successful and thrive. We continue to commit to providing the structures and support each student needs to nurture their growth and development in programs which respect dignity, maximize participation, foster integration and dependence as defined for each student based on their individual identity, strengths, and needs. The special education plan provides an overview of our programs, services, and key information such as roles and responsibilities, our staffing, SEAC, professional learning commitments, and all of these have a focus on supporting students with special education strengths and needs. As a district, we are committed to addressing ableism, shifting practices to an asset-based approach of inclusion, and challenging medical models that have a focus on diagnosis and or deficit. We acknowledge and commit to the work that must be done ahead to make these shifts. This commitment reflected in the special education plan is to examine and reconstruct our services to remove discriminatory barriers. Within the report, revisions to the special education plan that are overviewed include updates to our DDSB parent guardian guide and the IPRC language shift from case conference to care conference an amplified importance of ongoing student and parent guardian voice within program and pathway planning. We've updated our DDSB transition guide to further center student and family voice, and our commitments to professional learning include working alongside educators in classrooms through an applied coaching model, large group delivery professional learning, and ongoing network learning of professionals mirroring the cult critically conscious practitioner inquiry model. Inclusive Design and Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, are key foundations for this learning. For our special education programs, a strong emphasis is placed on the inclusion of students with special education needs, providing meaningful, individualized integration opportunity for our students who access through specialized placements. The majority of our students with special education strengths and needs access through regular class programming, but as a district, we continue to provide we continue, sorry, to experience a trend increasing the number of students new and within the DDSB that require individual programming that involves functional literacy, numeracy, communication skills, and supports for activities of daily living. The report shared this evening provides trustees with information regarding our special education class programs and changes between our current school year and next. Changes for the 22-23 school year include the planned phase out of the self-regulation program and an increase to the number of special education classes in the developmental and practical learning programs at the secondary level. The special education plan is posted publicly on the DDSB website. Our feedback on our programs and services reflected in the plan is welcomed throughout the year. 
Following sharing with trustees and the public this evening, the DDSB special education plan for the upcoming school year will be formally submitted to the Ministry of Education. This report is provided for information. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Superintendent McCauley. Do we have any questions or comments tonight? Go ahead, Trustee Edwards. Um, I, I just want to thank uh, staff and and uh, and SEAC members, particularly staff, on making sure this document is is reflective of the human rights uh, of our students, um, that it's inclusive, um, that it eliminates as much as possible the uh, a lot of the language around um, and and. Uh, placements around medical uh, diagnosis, and I really appreciate that. I think it's a, a good step forward. I always mention that this is a, this is a plan, and and when we look at strategic plans, it's you know for many years, this is a document that is is re really regulated by the Ministry of Education and how it's supposed what it's supposed to contain, and and so forth. So. Um, we've stretched the boundaries. I mean, the staff has stretched the boundaries in, in a little bit on, on doing this, but is doing the right thing, um, ensuring that this plan is definitely inclusive and, and reflects the human rights code, the human rights policy that we recently passed, and the indigenous education policy. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Edwards. And I'd just like to make a comment myself that I'd like to thank uh, Superintendent McCauley for yet another outstanding presentation around uh, inclusion, our inclusion area. Uh, the Durham Board, I'm very proud to say, is very well known throughout the communities uh, for the work that they do with our students with learning differences. So I'd just like to also um, uh, support the comments uh, made by um, by Trustee Edwards, and thank you for the work that you do in this area. Thank you so much. I think it links to your comments, um, similar to the um, student voice report. Uh, we are led by and guided by uh, the students that we're fortunate to serve, and uh, we have a lot to learn from them in order to serve them better. So. Uh, your comments are greatly appreciated, and we look forward to continuing to uh, recalibrate uh, in order to do better by them. So thank you. Moving on in the agenda then to item 9C, uh, and I call on Associate Director Wright and Executive Lead uh, Sir Janik for the Memorandum of Understanding with Durham Region Transit. Thank you, and through the chair, we're pleased to provide trustees with information about a memorandum of understanding that we've reached uh, alongside the Durham Catholic District School Board with Durham Region Transit. Uh, the MOU has been developed under the guiding principle that all parties are committed to enhancing the use of public transit for youth in Durham Region, including secondary students within a fiscally responsible framework. In December 2021, uh, both board chairs and staff attended the Durham Region Transit Executive Committee meeting to seek a discounted rate for bulk purchases and monthly passes uh, and request that DRT and both school boards work uh, closer together. Uh, through the recent bell time review, we also heard from families that the use of public transit uh, could be a good option uh, to help transport secondary students uh, to and from school where possible. Uh, since then, uh, both board chairs through the DSTS Governance Committee and board staff have been working actively with Durham Region Chair, uh, the Chair and Vice Chair of the DRT Executive Committee uh, and DRT staff to explore opportunities on how to work together, resulting in the MOU. Uh, additional features of the MOU include a commitment to accommodating some students within DRT's existing scheduled capacity on their network, uh, and that any fair changes to the bulk purchasing rate be communicated to both boards. Uh, recently, the DRT Executive Committee uh, also announced changes to the bulk purchase program uh, for school boards that lowered the purchase uh, thresholds, uh, which will have a positive impact on the Durham District School Board. Uh, ultimately, in the context of a province-wide shortage of uh, school bus drivers and a provincial review of student transportation announced in 2018, but that has not yet been completed, uh, the MOU provides a solid foundation and renewed commitment to help build a new local partnership uh, with Durham Region Transit uh, over the long term as we work to monitor progress and review priorities in the service of students. 
Thank you. Thank you, um, Executive Lead Serjanik. And I'll go to Trustee Edwards now for a question. Uh, thank you. Um, I appreciate that, that we've had these discussions uh, around transportation. It's definitely a step forward in, since the, some of our, our efforts in the past. And it's great to see that there will be a, a discount. I, a discount if, if we uh, meet certain, uh, certain bulk uh, rate uh, numbers. Um, I'm just wondering, though, in these discussions, uh, you did mention that you know many parents said that you know trans uh, public transportation would be would make things easier. Um, but one of the issues that always happens is is uh, uh, routes that change, um, and and they do do public consultation, but it's um, the methods and whatever is, that is used is not necessarily getting at the actual ridership and, and as far as the potential riders of the system. So I'm just wondering what kind of discussions you've had um, or has there been any discussions on um, getting better consultation on route changes in or that impact our students and the ability to take, uh, take advantage of public transportation. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, one, one part of this is part of the MOU is we're planning on meeting at least semi-annually to monitor uh, progress and review those priorities. Uh, and we would anticipate that that would be part of that discussion. Uh, in addition, us playing a larger role uh, in contributing uh, to DRT's planning uh, that then they would be bringing forward in front of uh, regional council uh, and the DRT executive uh, committee meeting. Uh, we, we view this as a first step uh, at establishing this partnership. Uh, and and uh, through those conversations, uh, we've had very preliminary right now, uh, but uh, increased cooperation and collaboration. And I, I appreciate that. As I said, that's most we've had as far as cooperation, collaboration in a long time. So uh, minor steps is great. Baby steps are, are great moving forward. Um, the other comment I have is just I, I'm, I'm still a little confused on um, because the rates, uh, the, the percentage discount changes depending on the, the number of rates. This is how is that going to be communicated to the students or, or the people that are purchasing the pass so that um, we don't have sort of a, a surprise of increased, um, like how frequent will that happen as far as the review of the rates and what the, uh, the bus pass rate will be based on the number we've purchased. Uh, thanks for the, the question through you, Madam Chair. Um, so these are the passes that the school board will buy on behalf of students. So uh, through DSTS, uh, and DSTS will purchase on behalf of both boards. So we've already met the threshold, essentially. Uh, one of the Catholic school boards uh, does utilize transit passes for one of their specialized programs. And so that, uh, that bulk pass of 250 is pretty much a guarantee for next year. So we know we're gonna be getting the preferential rate for those passes that we buy on behalf of uh, students and provide to them um, for special situations. Uh, the, I, I do believe that there is still a, um, a student pass that they can buy as individual students that we don't have the opportunity to purchase. So that will still remain a, a, an option for students. But in terms of our uh, cost for next year, it is uh, uh, laid out uh, already. Thank you very much. Um, I Just a quick comment, I do believe that uh, the partnership here uh, will be positive for both Durham Region Transit and the two school boards, so thank you for the work that you've done in this area. I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Barnes if there is anything to report uh, from OPSPA this evening. Chair? No, there isn't, apart from the reminder of the AGM, June 9th to the 11th. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Barnes. All right, so moving on to item 10, and we'll go back to Trustee Barnes for the Equity and Diversity Ad Hoc Steering Committee Report. Equity and Diversity Ad Hoc Steering Committee Report can be found on page 21. Thank you very much. 
And I see that uh, Trustee Lundquist has a question or a comment. Go ahead. I, have a qu I do, I have a question, Madam Chair. And it's just with respect to number six in the advisory ad hoc committee report. Um, and my question is this, it says, um, the program focuses on ways to amplify student experiences from kindergarten through grade 12. That's not my question. The doors will be open to the public on Saturday, June 11th, when the program closes for the year. But I don't know that it says what doors or how people can participate or learn about this if they would like to. And I'm wondering if we can provide information in light of that, because it's not clear to me and it's probably not to the public. And it says it will be open to the public. and um, students uh, connections to that. I don't think it's overall the general public. I think it will just be open to um, the students and their parents and uh, to close off the, um, the year for the program. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, as um, I just I noticed that there is uh, no correspondence tonight in the agenda in the package, and as I as there is no further business, I would like to um, adjourn this meeting. Uh, and just remind that we do have a special board meeting which will be starting shortly. Uh, thanks very much.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our special board meeting. We do have regrets from student trustee Kayla Wel Malcolm, and we do wish her well. Our moment of silence, our land acknowledgement. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school board and our schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, we learn, and we live. Are there any declarations of interest? Seeing none, we'll move to the agenda. You have an agenda in front of you with several items. Could I have a motion to approve that agenda? Thank you, Trustee Barnes, seconded by Trustee Edwards. All those in favor? This agenda is approved. There are no information items. We will move directly to the first recommended action, the trustee matter. I am in receipt of a letter from trustee Patrice Barnes, resigning from the board of trustees effective on Wednesday, June the 8th, due to her election as MPP, member of provincial parliament representing Ajax. The Education Act provides that a member of the board may resign with the consent of a majority of members present. I am looking for, for a trustee to move a motion to accept the resignation of Trustee Barnes. Should the resignation be accepted by the board, there will be some additional motions required. Is there a trustee who can move the acceptance of Patrice Barnes' letter of resignation. I'm looking for somebody to provide that motion. Thank you, Trustee Barrett, seconded by Trustee Edwards. I would like you now to vote one way or the other. Are we going to accept Trustee Barnes? Yes, comment. this regret um, seconding that motion and that because I mean uh, I've worked with Trustee Barnes as my court for you know representing Ajax for over eight years for the eight years and uh, I you your wisdom uh, will be and your camaraderie and your support will be deeply missed um, within the community but I know that you're going to represent Ajax at the provincial level extremely well and thank you for your service thank you trustee edwards those comments are shared by all around this table we have a motion on the floor it has been seconded i would like us now to vote to accept or reject that letter of resignation And that motion has passed. I would just like to say to Trustee Barnes, reiterating the comments made by Trustee Edwards, we have worked together since 2014. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with you. You have been an asset to the board. Thank you for your contribution. And we look forward to hearing more from you. We currently have a vacancy committee organized to address the current vacancy. 
I am looking for a trustee to move a motion that the terms of reference of the current trustee vacancy committee include the second vacancy created by the resignation of trustee Barnes. Is there a trustee who can move that motion? Thank you, Trustee Edwards, seconded by Trustee Forbes. Is there comment or is there question? Trustee Edwards. Um, I, I just want to uh, clarify as, as far as from the public is that, because uh, there is some confusion even around uh, when we had the other, we set up the vacancy committee, committee and they're saying why it isn't just for Oshawa and it's recognized under the Education Act is that a person can run um, as long as they are within the Durham District School Board uh, administrative boundary. Um, and they can run for any municipality, even though that, so a person can run in Pickering for, for Ajax or for Ajax for Oshawa. So um, that's why um, it was set up that way and, and recognizing that there was a possibility that we would be losing uh, another trustee. So um, just uh, hoping that uh, people do put their names forward, um, recognizing that they will be, uh, be the view of the municipality that that is chosen that they're chosen for uh, but decisions are made on behalf of all students of the Durham District School Board thank you for that explanation trustee Edwards yes we welcome applications from people living throughout the region of Durham That motion is before us. Uh, Nora, do we have, the, is the motion in front of us? Chair sure, Morton, I have my hand up, I have a question. Yes, Trustee Longquist. Thank you. Um, I just want, and, and I, think I, I think I might just not be clear, and I apologize because I'm pretty sure it's me. Um, so we now have to replace two trustees and we're using the same process. Does the time frame change at all for the appointment of the second trustee or are we going to still keep to the same time frame for the appointment? It's my, un Both appointments. It's my understanding that the time frame remains the same. Uh, Chair, Chair Morton, if I, may, if I might jump in, I think um, the issue for the board really is just um, establishing that vacancy committee for the current vacancy, or in this case, <coughs> uh, just confirming that the current vacancy can, uh, can look after both vacancies. In terms of establishing um, the timeline and process, under the board's bylaws, those issues are left to the vacancy committee. So at the, okay. first, at the first meeting of the vacancy committee, they would uh, either confirm the existing timeline or, or, uh, or not. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's what I presumed, but I wasn't, I wasn't clear. So I just wanted to make sure we had a process for addressing it. And if that's what the bylaws say, then I accept that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Lundquist. Also, thank you, Council Cotter, for that explanation. Again, I am asking for a trustee to move the motion that the terms of reference of the current vacancy committee include the second trustee vacancy created by the resignation of Trustee Barnes. Could I have somebody put forward that motion? I would do that, Madam Chair. Thank you, Trustee Forbes, seconded by Trustee Barrett. I, sorry, before I had a question, uh, Trustee Morton. Certainly, let's hear your Chair question. Morton, sorry. The way that the motion is worded, it sounds as if the terms of reference apply to this vacancy as well. So it kind of contradicts the response that Patrick, uh, Council Cotter gave to Trustee Lundquist because but the motion itself says we are going to accept the terms of reference of the existing for this which means that you would also be accepting the 16th and the appointment on the 20th. That's the way I would read the motion as it is, as it's presented. 
that's what actually prompted my question. So that makes that makes sense to me. So we might need to clarify the motion if if the advice if we take the advice provided. Or to build if that if it's acceptable to the board, but um, but it, it, it contradicts. So I, I've said enough. That's enough. If if I may, uh, Chair Morton. So the um, the terms of reference uh, of the committee were merely to um, to uh, fill the vacancy uh, in accordance with the bylaw. Uh, the the time frames and deadline and that process was established through the committee, not through the board, as part of the terms of reference. Thank you, Council Cotter. I see Trustee Crawford with a hand up. Trustee Crawford. Uh, I guess just looking for some more clarity on the same question. Uh, are we advising the committee to do it this way? And will the committee have to meet to uh, put that forward and go ahead with the suggestion? I'm going to ask Council Cotter to respond as well. Thank you. And through you, Chair Morton. So under the board's bylaws, uh, Section 6.2.1, in the event of a vacancy, the board shall establish a vacancy committee to consider and, ter and determine the means of filling the vacancy. So it's, the, it's all issues are left to the vacancy committee. Um, the, only, the only involvement of the board is, is uh, if there's an interview process, board members can attend for the interview process and vote on the member, and then they accept the recommendation of the committee in terms of the appointment. So all, all issues are left to the committee. I think, I hope that answers the question. So there would have to be a meeting of the committee then? That's, that's correct. And what we had contemplated is if the board does strike the committee, then we would have a committee meeting immediately following um, the, this meeting. Chair Morton, yes. if I may, I'll just, I think that the intent behind what this motion is doing is suggesting that instead of striking two different committees to fill two vacancies, you're assigning it to the uh, committee that is already formed. Thank you for that explanation, Director Marsh. You have a question, Trustee Barrett? Uh, no, with the explanation by uh, uh, Council Cotter, um, I'm prepared to second the motion that's on the table to, to bring it to a vote. I understand the, the uh, with the explanation, the difference between the terms of reference and establishing uh, dates and timelines at the committee. So I'll second the motion. Thank you, Trustee Barrett. We have a motion on the floor put forward by Trustee Forbes, seconded by Trustee Barrett. Is there any further comment or question? If not, then I'm going to ask you to vote using your green check mark or your red X. Thank you. This motion is carried. Moving on to the next recommended action, and we will go to Trustee Barrett. Trustee Barrett, you're on. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Morton. There is uh, an item within the bylaws that certainly has come to our attention um, with regards to filling uh, the, the, the establishment of the committee for filling the vacancy. Uh, the bylaws, you know, as we discovered, has to be uh, done before 4.30 p.m. But also in rereading the bylaw with uh, certainly with Robert and Patrick, it also says that these interviews have to be held on a Monday. I don't. We. I think we all missed this during the uh, the bylaw review. It's a little bit cumbersome. Um, so, uh, what I'm asking for and prepared to be able to put the the motion forward is that uh, what we're looking for is a waiver of the trustee appointment interview provision, so that we can continue to be able to meet our dates for the first trustee vacancy, which was interviews on the 16th and an announcement, uh, an appointment for the vacancy on the 20th. So in order to be able to waive the bylaws, we need a two thirds uh, majority. And I would make the motion that I would move that the board suspend the rule of the interviews occur on a Monday 
and that they be completed by 430 so that the committee has flexibility to move forward with the process in a timely manner or timely way, pardon me. So, I mean, I, I, uh, I will be glad to move that motion, uh, Chair Morton. Thank you, Trustee Barrett. Trustee Barrett has put forward a motion. Could I have a seconder for that motion? Thank you, Trustee Edwards. Discussion regarding that motion. I am seeing no questions. We will hold the vote. The green check mark or the red X will indicate your approval or your rejection. This motion has also passed. Thank you. Moving on to the next recommended action, the election of audit committee member. With the resignation of Trustee Stone, there is a vacancy on the audit committee. The audit committee has an upcoming meeting on June the 15th and requires two trustees to be in attendance. The current trustees appointed to the audit committee are trustees Barrett and Crawford. In the unlikely event that one of them would not be able to attend, the audit committee would not be able to meet on that day. As a result, I'm looking for the nomination of a trustee to serve on the audit committee for the remainder of this term. Uh, that nomination could be nominating a fellow trustee or it could be a self-nomination. I am looking for nominations, please, for the audit committee. Thank you, Trustee Edwards. I am willing to self-nominate for the audit committee. Thank you, Trustee Edwards. Are there further nominations? Are there further nominations? Thank you, Trustee Edwards, for self-nominating for the very important audit committee. And I know that you will be meeting in the very near future. Moving on to the next recommended action, and that's the election of an alternate Special Education Advisory Committee, the SEAC committee member. With the resignation of Trustee Stone, there is a vacancy on SEAC for an alternate member. Alternate members typically attend SEAC meetings. On the advice of Trustee Edwards, the board's representative on SEAC, I am looking for the nomination of a trustee to serve on SEAC as an alternate member for the remainder of this term. Are, and would you like to speak to that, Trustee Edwards? Um, it should actually say alternates um, because both uh, Trustee Stone and now with the resignation of Trustee Barnes, we are missing both alternates. So um, for the remainder of, of the term until uh, the next organizational meeting, um, I, I'm not sure whether we just want to appoint one for now and, and wait, uh, elect one for now and wait until the next replacement of the, the t other trustees come in to do the second alternate. I, it's up to the board, but uh, just aware that we are missing two. So if, um, if our trustees are, are absent, there's a possibility of, of losing quorum at SEAC, which is um, it's important. Uh, so that they meet their mandatory, you know, 10 meetings a year uh, requirement under legislation. So we, we really just need one for now. It's up to the board, but by rights, we have to replace two <laughs> eventually. 
Thank you, Trustee Edwards. Would you be in favor of then of nominating one tonight and then one again in two weeks' time on June the 20th? I have, I have no problem with doing that. I just, I recognize that trustees around the table are very, very busy and we're trying to fill in positions so it might give us the opportunity to have maybe one of the other new trustees that get appointed uh, to also take advantage of, of, of being on part of the, one of the, uh, uh, on the committee. That's all I'm saying. So I have no problem with that. Thank you, Trustee Edwards. As long as you don't have a problem with that, we are looking for one nomination for the Special Education Advisory Committee. A self-nomination or a nomination of a fellow trustee would be awesome. I would go to Trustee Thatcher. Thank you and through you, Chair Morton, and I'll self-nominate for one of the alternates. Thank you, Trustee Thatcher. Are there other nominations are there again madam chair i'm not nominating but i have a, a question and my hand has been up for some time i'm sorry trustee lundquist could you repeat that question please so i didn't ask my question i was just observing my hand has been up for some time and i think somehow you can't see my hand somehow um but my question was really um procedural in the sense that I'm looking at the calendar right now. I don't see a SEAC meeting scheduled for June. Can we ask um, Trustee Edwards, who's the chair, who's the chair of SEAC, if there is a meeting in fact in June or if there will be no meetings until September? Because if there are no meetings until September, it makes sense to me to only do one right now. But if there is a potential meeting where we won't have quorum, it might make sense to do two. And so I'm just I just want to be clear on when the meetings are so that we're, we're doing this in a sensible way. We'll ask Trustee Edwards to respond. Yes, there is a meeting in June. June 16th is the meeting for, for SEAC. It's usually the third Thursday of every, every month. I, I see it now buried. Sorry, I didn't see no it on problem. the calendar. Thank you. We have Trustee Thatcher who has self-nominated are there other nominations for the SEAC committee? Seeing none, I thank Trustee Thatcher for self-nominating. Moving on to our next agenda item. The election of an OPSPA voting member. I'm going to go to Trustee Edwards to explain the need there. Um, yes, uh, we as a board have two directors representing uh, the DDSB at the, on the OPSPA board of directors. We le elect those two directors at the organizational meeting. One is a voting member, um, and um, which votes particularly um, on issue on all issues, but particularly is the the, the counted vote uh, for I issues re pertaining to bylaws, AGM, and then when we sit as labor council. The second director um, is the alternate to that voting member. Uh, when that voting member is not able to attend. Again, with the resignation of, of Trustee Barnes, who was our voting member, um, and um, the, uh, our, our alternate uh, member, our second director, is also unable to attend the AGM. We do not have a voting member at, uh, to vote on very important issues. Um, at the OPSPA AGM, including some bylaw changes and some resolutions that are being presented to the board. Um, at this point in time, it's my knowledge that there's only two of us, two trustees that are registered for the OPSPA AGM, and that is Trustee Barrett and, uh, and myself. So I would propose that we temporarily uh, assign our voting member 
basically to one of them, uh, one of us. My proposal is to uh, use uh, 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 present uh, Trustee Barrett as our voting member, um, only because of uh, I am also running for an elected position, and I'd prefer that that um, as Trustee Barrett isn't um, running for anything, that he become the voting member for for OPSPA. That's my recommendation. Thank you, Trustee Edwards. So we are looking for the nomination of a trustee, and you are recommending Trustee Barrett to serve as the voting member of OPSPA for the remainder of this term. Could I have somebody put forward that motion, please? Um, Madam Chair, if I could. Just to, to clarify, it's really just uh, pointing me as the voting member for uh, the AGM, because after that, I will not be on the board of directors of OPSPA. And so therefore, you know, other individuals will, um, will have to, uh, will have to broach it again in September, uh, Madam Chair, because I'm not going to be a board of director member for OPSPA. So, so we really just need the motion to read as the voting delegate for the AGM. Thank you. Are you putting forward that motion, Trustee Barrett? Uh, sounds kind of weird nominating myself, but... Uh, a self-nomination is fine. Okay, because there's only... Yeah, because you have to be present. There's no proxy vote allowed, so... Thank you. Are there any other nominations? I see a hand up from Trustee Lundquist. Trustee Lundquist? I was just going to move to um, have uh, Trustee Barrett take take that role on for the AGM. So um, I guess I'll be seconding the motion and we can belong. Thank you everyone for your support. Thank you, Trustee Barrett for being our voting member in Ottawa in the next few days. Moving on to the next item, 6F. As we know, Director Marsh has informed the board that she will be retiring at the end of this calendar year. In order to ensure that the board can begin the search and the hiring process without delay, I think it is important that we consider forming a director search ad hoc committee to begin this work over the summer months. I'm asking if there is somebody who could propose a motion, and I think we have wording for the motion that could be projected up on the screen. And I'm going to go to Trustee Thatcher to put forward that motion. Trustee Thatcher. Thank you, and through you, Chair Morton. Uh, this is the uh, prepared mo motion, and this, it reads this way. In light of Director Marsh's upcoming retirement, the board established that the board establish an ad hoc committee with terms of reference to oversee and undertake any and all steps the committee deems appropriate in the search for a new director of education and to report back to the board of trustees, the committee of the whole, closed session, with a recommendation as to the preferred candidate for the board's consideration and determination. This report back should be made by no later than October 31st, 2022. If any delay is encountered, the committee is to report back to the board so that an amended date may be considered. Thank you, Trustee Thatcher. In fact, if the trustees do form this committee, I have proposed that the first meeting of that committee take place in camera right after the vacancy committee meeting later this evening. We have a motion in front of us. Could I have somebody to second that motion? Thank you, Trustee Barnes. Are there questions, are there comments regarding that motion?
I see a hand up with Trustee Lundquist. No, it was a carryover. I was putting my hand up to second the motion and I just didn't get it down fast enough. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you repeat that again, Trustee Lundquist? I can. I said I was actually just raising my hand to second the motion and that's not necessary. So I'm just taking it down. I just didn't do it fast enough, Chair Morton. Thank you kindly. Further comments? I'm seeing no hands, so we will vote on that motion. The green check mark or the red X would indicate your choice. Thank you. That motion has passed. Looking at our agenda, we have completed our agenda for the special board meeting, but I see that Trustee Barnes would like to make a comment. Trustee Barnes. There we go. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Morton. I just wanted to take the opportunity to, it's really with a heavy heart that I, I resigned from my position. This has been home for eight years. I've really enjoyed representing my community and learning so much from the awesome people that are in this room. And I just wanna thank you all for being patient with me, for being willing to have conversations that are not always comfortable, for guiding me in the ways that um, has helped me to grow as trustee and I want to thank each and every member of the trustee board as well. It's, we don't always agree, but we have always tried to work together to accomplish what is best for our students. I want to thank you, and I appreciate all you've done, and I wish each and every one of you the best. I know the DDSB will continue to grow. I know we will continue to put our students at the center of what we do, and I've appreciated the growth, and I've appreciated being able to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Barnes. And I think student trustee DeMario would like to make a comment. DeMario? Um, thank you, Chair Morton. Uh, I do not have a speech as revolutionary as the one that Trustee Barnes just made, but I just wanted to say a big thank you to Trustee Barnes for all the work that you have done over the, um, the couple months that I've served as a student trustee. I have not served as many years as many of the adult trustees on the board and many of the other adult staff members, but I can say that each and every passing day working with you has been an absolute honor and a privilege that not every 17-year-old gets to experience. And that you've been not just an amazing leader and an amazing inspiration, but you've also been an amazing friend. And I know that throughout your time on the board and throughout um, your time with this new position that you have been elected for, I know that you have and will always make a positive impact. Uh, impact is what I stand by, impact is what I live for. And I know that Ajax is in good hands and I want to wish you congratulations and thank you for your service on the board. I am truly grateful and it is an honor, as I said before, that I am very grateful to have. Thank you. Well said, DeMario. Thank you. We know, Trustee Barnes, that we will be hearing more about you and your achievements at Queen's Park. We know that you will represent your community extremely well. Thank you for your service here. If there is no other business, we will consider this meeting to be adjourned and then we'll move on to our next meeting.
Uh, good evening, uh, trustees. I'm going to call the uh, trustee vacancy ad hoc committee uh, to order. Uh, we did have an agenda that was distributed prior to the meeting uh, with uh, six items on it. I am looking um, um, to see, first of all, if there's any declarations of interest with the agenda tonight. I'm not seeing any indications of such, and we do have the agenda before us. Uh, I'm looking for an approval of the agenda. If I could have someone to be able to approve the agenda as distributed. Nikki Lundquist, um, any objections to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll consider the agenda approved. Uh, what we do have, as discussed at the last meeting, we do now have uh, responsibility for a uh, second trustee vacancy um, and looking to be able to seek direction from the ad hoc committee to determine if we want, I would say that the primary decision that we have to make is whether or not we want to be able to keep the dates for the filling of the vacancy uh, the same, which would be looking to be able to do interviews on the 16th with an appointment on the 20th. I know that in discussions uh, with uh, uh, Robert Sudanik uh, after the election and prior to, I think there was some changes made, slightly made to the, uh, the, um, uh, the communication with regards to leaving it a little bit open-ended in the sense that there'd be potentially more than one trustee, uh, but looking for um, thought processes from trustees on whether or not we, on the 16th, look at the appointment for two or and keep the same dates or whether or not we look at being able to uh, potentially um, establish new dates. Trustee Crawford. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Does, would this require another notice to go out with the same detail, but explaining why we're doing that? Or can we stay with the, is the other notice open enough that we can just take in the applications with well, that one notice? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, Paul, but as uh, was discussed in the public meeting, not uh, it, the, the, uh, the appointment was seeking for candidates from across the board wasn't area specific. So the only thing that would have to be potentially updated is now that there's two uh, vacancies, but the, um, uh, the advertisement was um, uh, quite open. I see Robert would like to uh, comment. Uh, Robert. Thank you, Chair Barrett. Uh, in terms of uh, additional communications, if trustees chose to uh, keep the same uh, uh, deadline for applications. Uh, I believe it's on the 13th of June with interviews taking place on the uh, 16th. Uh, our plan would be to uh, issue a press release uh, tomorrow morning uh, in lieu of an additional ad in the paper newspapers, uh, but that would be able to make uh, online additions if media uh, picks it up. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, further social media posts and a boost uh, in advertising uh, on social media, uh, in addition to what uh, was originally contemplated with the first uh, appointment. In addition, uh, as well, uh, just sharing that uh, with uh, other members uh, of the community and asking for it to be spread broadly. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Does that uh, address your concerns, Paul? I think so. We're saying that it does have to go out again with an explanation. So, and yeah, go we, ahead. Have, just, we have time to do that. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, explanation and now that there's two vacancies. Yeah, so. Okay. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. So I'm looking for some sort of direction, trustees, on do you, would you like to be able to do the two uh, vacancies this, in the same time frame? I know we had selected the 20th because that's the last board meeting and then the, the, the individuals can be sworn in. So um, just looking for some direction. Um, uh, Chair Barrett, if I, if I may with your leave, um, I'd just like to point out as well that um, um, it is within the discretion of the committee. There are two options to fill the vacancy. One is to adopt the same process and piggyback right. on it as Robert has suggested with the, yeah. uh, with the further notice, et cetera. But the committee could uh, 
fill the appointment by selecting a candidate from the NAS last municipal election for, for Ajax that wasn't successful. That option yeah. is also yeah. available. Just wanted that clear on the record. No, that is uh, absolutely true. So, uh, Trustee Lundquist. I'm wondering, Chair Barrett, if it makes sense to move a motion, something to the effect of uh, that I so I moved to adopt the same process for the appointment of both trustee vacant to fill both trustee vacancies. And if that's adequate or if it needs more detail, I don't think it does. I think it's adequate. Um, and and then the process will be identical, although I I. I acknowledge that we need to repost, so I don't know if that needs to be in the motion or not. I don't think so. It's still the same process. So and I guess I would move that we adopt the same process for appointing two trustees. Could you, could you just, if I could jump in, could you add process and timeline to that, uh, Trustee Lundquist? I absolutely can. So I will move to adopt the same process and timeline for the appointment of two trustees to fill the vacancies on the board. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor by Trustee Lundquist to be able to uh, move forward with the same process and timeline uh, for the filling of two trustee vacancies. Discussion to that motion. Not seeing any. Does it require a seconder? No, it doesn't. We're in committee. Um, so I see uh, Director Marsh's hand is up. Just to let you know, Trustee Edwards has a comment. Oh, yes, because I can't see the... Uh, yeah, thank you, Director Marsh. I forgot all about the ones in the boardroom. I was only <laughs> focusing on the ones who were virtual. Uh, go ahead, Trustee Edwards. And we, uh, we don't have control over our mics, so we have to wait till somebody <laughs> pushes the button, so it makes it right. a little difficult to, to interject. Uh, but, yeah, I, as... Um, I, I feel that the timelines um, are sufficient to, uh, with the same selection process, to, to fill the vacancy. Um, so I totally agree with the motion. That's all I was going to say. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Edwards. So any further comments? Not seeing any. If we could... Um... At least those ones are virtual. Use their uh, check mark or X to be able to signify their um, acceptance. And then I can see one, two, three. Yes, okay, I can see the ones virtually as well. So the motion is carried. So uh, we will go forward with the same process. And as Robert has mentioned, uh, there will be some um, uh, publicity tomorrow. And our next meeting is on uh, June the 16th. Uh, the nominations are on the 13th, so we will receive the packages of, uh, of individuals. And uh, depending upon the number of candidates, then we'll set up a time frame uh, with regards to when we're going to meet on the 16th. Any further questions, trustees? Not seeing any, since we have completed the Items on the agenda, I'll declare this meeting adjourned. And then, uh, Trustee Morton, we can move to our next meeting. Thank you, Trustee Barrett. Our next meeting.